So this article comes by way of Steve Quozo, um, again with the New York Post. Uh, headline reads, New York City landlords luring workers back to offices with pickleball, golf simulators, arcade games, and gourmet food. Now, I won't go through the uh, entire article, but just look at how it leads in. Forget boring office buildings with little to no coffee offerings, endless floors of beige cubicles, and monotonous marble-clad lobbies. Commercial landlords are wooing major tenants and their work-from-home loving employees back to the office with unprecedented amenities from golf simulators and rock climbing walls to gourmet food and transcendental transcendental meditation rooms. Mm, um. <laughs> um, with Manhattan vacancies at a record 21%, building owners know that old-school executive suites aren't, aren't nearly enough. An office, here's a quote, an office tower without amenities is sunk in today's market, said a real estate broker who didn't want to be named. Today's tenants are much more demanding. It's funny, he, he would have benefited, he or she would have benefited from just putting their quote there. Uh, today's tenants are much more demanding. They love their jobs, but they want to have a good time too. And with so much space available, companies can pick and choose. Well, I think, I think it's a testament to we still need the connection of the human connection, the space to come together. I think hybrid work is still there. Yeah. I think that these loans are upside down. You couldn't yeah. sell the property if you wanted to. So you definitely need to reinvent it. Um, and I think that if you live in the city specifically, it becomes increasingly important because you probably live if you're in New York in a really tiny apartment, yeah. it's not that great to hang out in. And so you would rather go be somewhere where you have all these amenities and things to do and spend most of your time there during the day and then just sleep in your little like 500 square foot studio <laughs> that you pay four grand for at night, right? And, and so it definitely works. It's a very smart strategy. I mean, I commend those guys for the innovation there to think about how to, how to make that pivot. Um, so smart. Yeah. I, I'm wondering if those are co-working spaces. I'm wondering if they're, it's shared amenities amongst all the different business owners that are in there. I yeah. wonder how that works. Yeah. He didn't go into that. He went into a few other specs of just the different things and people, the luxury and stuff. But I think you hit on something that I'd like you to expound on a bit more, which is, um, when something isn't working. So from a leadership mm. business operation perspective, when something isn't working in order to avoid going completely upside down or dying, you need yeah. of adaptation and innovation. Yeah. I mean, it's just this typical business life cycle, right? You start up, grow up expansive, mature, and then you either die or you rebirth. You have to reinvent yourself all over again. It's been a pretty tremendous run in real estate over the last call it 20 years. Yeah. And we're we like we've been, always been talking about like the world is changing, right? And so the old hats, they're out, right? The new hats are in. So what do people care about? They care about that stuff. They care about congregating in community and you know, their place of work is where you spend most of your time, right? So I don't want to be stuck in a little stuffy cubicle. And so make it attractive for people to want to come back. And so they're reinventing themselves. They're rebirthing the, the way we think about the commercial real estate office and that strategy. And I think it's smart because I think, I do think hybrid work is here to stay. I mean, we follow that model within right. our business. Right. Yeah. Those are really good points because I, I think even from the standpoint, I wasn't even, when I was looking into this, I was looking at it from the standpoint of like the situation they find themselves in um, and the, the appeal to lure people back in. But I didn't even think about the why. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that. That's really good. They, they don't have a choice, right? right? So your option is go into default, right? And, or sit there with a the vacant building or invest capital back into the business, right. reallocate. And, you know, you, you're going to get the tax benefit. The, all of that's you can write that off. They'll do, go do what's called a cost segregation study. They'll try to depreciate as much as, as they can in the first year. You can depreciate like 60% of that in the first year. And they'll recapture it that way by way of a tax write-off. Um, they may have even refinanced it or recapitalized the, the business. I mean, each real estate property is a business, right. you know? So they're just thinking about it from that standpoint. Yeah. Smart. Mm -hmm. Same thing we need to do as, as entrepreneurs. we we'll got you there. won't get you there. It won't keep you there, right? So you just got to constantly be thinking about how to reinvent it. Yeah, no, it was, that's gold right there, man. 